Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. So I wrote this article back in 2018 titled Learn Dart Before You Flutter. And the main idea behind this article was to encourage people to essentially explore the underlying language before diving into Flutter development. You find that a lot of the logic you're writing in Flutter is essentially Dart code, which gets compiled into machine code in the end. So most of the features from Flutter essentially comes from the underlying language Dart and its um, tool set. So here we're just gonna cover some basics over the Dart language itself and the features that make Dart a suitable language for Flutter development. Let's begin. All right, so I've got a page open on Dartpad, if you go to dartpad.dev, and we are going to start, and we're essentially gonna start by declaring a class, and we'll call this class order. So Dart is an object-oriented language. You are able to declare classes and interfaces. Dart also is um, statically typed. So you're able to take advantage of features like type safety that comes with various languages. And in our class, we're going to define some instance variables. We'll start with an ID and our order takes a reference and our order also takes in a date. And as with classes in general, we can also define a constructor for our class. And then this order will take in an ID, a reference and a date. And in here we do something like this dot ID equal ID and let's do the same with reference and date. And then we can also define methods as such. And then in here we'll have our implementation. So for now we can just return string that contains details about our order. And in order to use this class, let's define our main function. And then in there we'll create an instance order one. We'll give it a reference and then we'll specify a date. And let's print out our order information. So if I'm to run this, that gives me the results over here. So if you come from any object oriented programming languages, like let's say Java or C sharp, or even JavaScript, TypeScript, this should look pretty familiar, which is on purpose because the idea of this language is that it will be something that is easily picked up. So although we have elements of this language that are familiar, there are certain shortcuts you can take which can make you a bit more productive. So for instance, instead of going through the boilerplate of retrieving, setting these parameters and assigning those parameters, we can, for instance, do this instead, which saves us from declaring all of that. So that means whatever we pass in here will automatically be assigned to these instance variables. And if you run that, that should still look the same. Also, these variables are public in order to set a variable as private, you prefix it with an underscore as such, which makes it private. And we can apply that here as well and here as well. And if I invoke that, that should still look fine. All right. And also we can, rather than using the generic var, you can also specify the type you're expecting. So in this case, we can set that to an int and we can specify a string for both of these. And this is a date time rather. And that looks like that. But for now, I'll just, I'll just make it var. Also here we're using string concatenation combined with the new line character in order to output these on separate lines. So with strings, we can use multi-line strings instead. So those are your triple quotes for opening and then, and then triple quotes to close them off which means we can do without all of these, which should give us the same sort of effect we want. Okay, it's gone forward a bit too much because of all this space in here. So let's bring that back and then let's see that. Okay, there we go. Okay, the parameters we're specifying for our constructor by default, um, these are re set as required. We do, however, have the ability to set parameters as optional. So for example, with this date, we've got two different ways of setting this date as optional. So we've got the optional positional parameter. So that means you would surround it with these boxed brackets and this will make the date optional. 
So that means I can exclude the date here and it will still run, but then it will give us null. So any variables that do not have a value set are automatically set to null. So if you come from a JavaScript background, there is no undefined in that. It's either set with a value or it's set as null. And then the second way you can set optional parameters is by using the optional named parameter. So rather than use the boxed brackets, you can use the, the curved one. So that should look like that. But then you can't start it with an underscore. You need to make it public that way. And then in order to use that, you declare the name of that named parameter and then you specify a value as such. So if I run this and then um, let's make that public and there we go. Also a common feature that object oriented languages like for instance Java have is the ability to set multiple constructors but then you differentiate these constructors by the amount of parameters you have or the type of parameters you have. I think with Java is the amount of parameters you have. Um, yeah, don't remember fully, did it a long time ago. But then with Dart, you get what are known as named constructors. You start with the constructor name and then you add a period and then you give it a namespace. So for instance, we can say with discount and you can give it any name you want really. So let's say with this one, we specify the ID, specify the reference, and then we use the optional positional parameter and then we'll, we'll specify the date and we'll also specify a code. So this would be our discount code, which means that we need to create that over here. And in fact, I'll lose the date and I'll just have the code here instead. But then what we can do is in here, we can assign a value to date such and running that should still give us a, a success. When instantiating classes, the new keyword is also optional. So we can do without the new keyword here, here and here as well. And these were changes that were made related to Flutter essentially. So that's why we're able to declare our widgets um, in this style without the new keyword. So it's just a productivity win, if anything. Another feature which is quite common in Dart development is the use of one known as method cascades. Well, before we get to that, let's instantiate our named constructor. So in order to do that, we'll set it to order. We'll create a variable called order2, and then we'll say order with discount as such, and then um, we'll give an order ID, give it a reference, and then we can give it a code, and then we can invoke our get info method. Okay, that looks as such. A cool feature that Dart gives is what are known as method cascades. So in order to illustrate that, let's say we've got a list of strings and then we'll call it bookings. And over here, we'll do something like order two, double bookings. Then I'll just have some strings. And let's, let's set our code as such. So I'll cut this and I'll paste this here and everything should still run fine. So what method cascades allows us to do is to chain the assignment being made to properties on our class and also invoking methods. If I comment this out, so this will look as such. So from there, you use the double period symbol, you get rid of this semicolon, and then um, we can continue to chain our assignments as such. We're also able to chain our get info method call such so if we invoke this um yeah of course nothing happens so let's print this out instead and then that prints that out and let's print out our code so because code is optional we can do a check for it so let's say code is not equal to null if not then we'll specify our code or else we just output nothing. And let's try that. Okay, so we've got code. And let's see what order one looks like. Yeah, that's about fine. Okay, of course, if we need to type these, this will be order, and this will also be order. And everything should work okay. 
If you wish to learn more, I've got a fuller course on this called Get Started with Dart. It's got more videos um, covering um, topics such as the inbuilt data type. It covers classes in depth. It also covers um, other features like interfaces and mixins. So I got it available. Link is in the description.